morning. Father, we bless your name. Lord Jesus, we love you this morning. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We adore you. There is no other God beside you. And we're just privileged this morning that we can gather together on this platform, together at your feet, and to worship you, and to experience your presence, your tangible presence. Right now, we feel your, your presence in our living room, in our rooms, Lord God. Wherever we are this morning, you are present because you are the omnipresent one. You are the God who cares for us deeply. And Lord, we honor you for that. We honor you for your faithfulness. We honor you for your character. We honor you, O oh Lord, for your sturdiness, the confidence we draw from knowing that you are a covenant-keeping God. And that your thoughts toward us, they are always good. They are never evil. Always to bring us success and prosperity. Even the future that we long for. Lord, we are just so thankful that there is no master like you. All others, oh Lord, will uh, use, abuse, and kick us to the curb. But you, oh Lord, are a shield for us. You are the lifter of our head. You are the comforter that comforts us in times of trouble. You walk with us even as we walk through the valley of the shadows of death. You are the supplier of all our needs. You are Jireh, the Lord our provider. Shalom, our peace. Rohi, O oh God, you're our chief shepherd. Father, you are Shama, the Lord who is with us, who will never leave us nor forsake us. This morning we are honored. This morning we are privileged. This morning, O oh Lord, we are encouraged by your presence. Indeed, in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. We just want to bless you this morning. We just want to honor you. We want to love you this morning because you first loved us. And you gave your life up for us this morning, O oh Lord, as we come together to pray. As we come together, O oh Lord, to share uh, your bread. To break bread, O oh God, on this platform. We welcome you. Holy Spirit, did you come and speak to us and reveal to us things that we have never seen before. Deepen our relationship with you. Deepen our walk with you, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you that we uh, can be a blessing to others and glorifying to you. We thank you for your holy angels that you have commanded, O oh Lord, to watch over us and to minister to us. Lord, we thank you this morning for open heavens we thank you, Lord, for access. We thank you, Lord, that we can speak, speak things into being. We thank you that we can call the things which be not as though they are. We thank you, Lord, for all these uh, powers and authority that you have bestowed upon the church, that the church could rise up and be a light in the midst of darkness, to be salt where there is tasteless attitudes, O oh Lord, and lifestyles. We thank you and we bless you this morning. We commit this time to you now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and all God's people agree, saying, Amen and Amen. Praise God for his goodness and his mercies. This morning, as we continue on the thought of understanding covenants, on the thought of um, that two-way street where God promises us so many things and outside of the bargain, which is us living and pursuing the kingdom of God like no other. I'd like to take you to Isaiah this morning. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22. This is part of God's covenant. These are all the promises that this covenant-keeping God says he will do for us when we return to him, when we pursue his kingdom first. He says to Isaiah, or through Isaiah, I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. What he opens, no man can shut, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. This is a prophecy um, of Jesus Christ. This prophecy is the confidence that we have 
in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he will open doors for you this morning that no man can shut. And he will shut doors that no one can open. What is not according to his will, he shuts. So when God shuts something, it's important for us to know that God is shutting that door and not try to force it open. Isaiah 22, verse 22. Philippians 4.19, Paul says, I am convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have, for I have seen the abundant riches of glory revealed to me through the anointed one, Jesus Christ. Praise God. What a God. Paul is saying, as I pursue his presence, the more I pursue his presence, I am convinced. I am convinced. I am absolutely confident that my God will fully satisfy every need that I have. This morning, God will supply all your needs according to his riches, his abundant riches of glory revealed to us through the anointed one, Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we have access to God's abundance. Through Jesus Christ, we have access to God's riches. Amen. And Paul is saying, and we ought to believe that God is telling the truth this morning and be convinced like Paul was that God will fully satisfy whatever your needs are this morning, whatever you have brought to this table this morning, be fully satisfied that your God, that my God, will supply, fully satisfy. After seeing what he has done in the past, after looking back into your diary, into your journal, into your memory bank, and seeing the stones of remembrance, that same God that brought you through the adversities of the past, the mountains of the past, is the same God who will take you through into your future. Circumstances change, but the deliverer does not change. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can have this confidence to speak to any mountain that stands in your way, any circumstance stand in your way. These are just illusions to try and distract you, just as the chariots of fire just as the horses of fire served to distract Elisha from seeing the one thing that Elijah said, if you see me, your desires will be granted. If you don't, then you won't. Praise God. Second Corinthians 9, 8. And God will generously provide all your need then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. When the motives of us being wealthy is godly, God will always supply your need. When the, the motive is that we will be a blessing to others, that we will extend God's kingdom, the Bible says God will generously provide all your need. And it, all it takes is just a change of perspective. All it does, all we need to do is change our perspective and say this, everything that God blesses me with is for me to bless others and glorify God. Everything that God has given me, my gifts, my talents, my wealth, my money, my possessions, they are all given to me for this express purpose. And that is to bless people and glorify God. When that is the motive, watch God come and act on your behalf. Matthew 16, 19 from the Amplified Bible. The word of God says, I will give you the keys. Keys always represent authority and power. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, whatever you forbid, whatever you declare to be improper and unlawful on earth will have already been bound in heaven. 
And whatever you lose, whatever you permit, you declare as lawful on earth, will have already been loosed in heaven. Praise God. This is the authority of the children of the living God. This is your authority. This is my authority. And you know how we, we receive authority this morning? We receive levels of authority when we are faithful in the small things. The Bible talks about the minas that were given to servants. And the master went off into a faraway land. When he came back, the ones that multiplied the minas, he gave them cities to watch over. Authority. When we are faithful in the small things, the little gifts that God has given us, to wake up and to pray to deprive ourselves of sleep and to pray. When we do that consistently and being faithful when no one sees us, we will receive authority over so much. When we're faithful in that level, we are then released another level. Some people think that when they become believers that automatically authority is given to them no the principles of god is simple you're faithful in the small then god will entrust to you the next level and then the next level your authority over demons your authority over principalities your authority over territorial spirits over familiar spirits these are levels of authority that we earn when we are faithful in the small things all these scriptures that i've just read to you become yours when you're faithful in the small things. Amen. When we decide to walk with God, it is a decision that we wake up daily and we need to commit to. When you wake up, many times we just go through our day hurriedly. We go through our day just by default. We just get up and we routinely do what we, we, we always do. Get up, clean up, have breakfast, and out the door to work or do what we, we have always done. I'd like to encourage you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to encourage you this morning to be very intentional as you wake up. And that's why we have moments of devotion. Our quiet time. Our quiet time is when we sit before the Lord and ask the Lord to speak to us. This morning and the past few mornings, we have established that our God is a faithful God. His side of the bargain never fails, can never fail. You can bet your life on it that he will never fail. Trustworthy, loyal, to the end, just as he has exalted his word above his name, he can be trusted. We are the ones that need working on. And this morning, as you wake up, be intentional about what you are about to do. As you plan your day, the Bible says many are the plans of man's heart. But it is the Lord who has the final say. So be intentional with your attitude toward those who are closest to you, to your wife, to your husband, to your children, what attitude will you choose to greet them with this morning? Will it be one with a positive effect or will it be one of harshness and words exchanged that are unbecoming of a kingdom person? Will you allow the pressures of life to overrun you very early? Nothing can happen to you without your consent. You only lose it when you decide to lose it. When you decide to lose your temper, when you decide to lose your faith, those decisions are yours to make. The consequences of them never are. When you and I wake up early, this the Lord revealed to me very very profoundly he says you choose your attitude toward your wife you choose your attitude toward your children you choose your attitude toward the world every day 
So don't walk into the day by default carrying what was from yesterday. Yesterday is dead and gone. It's history. Today is a new day. Just as God's mercies are renewed every morning, we too must renew our attitude toward the world. And we must choose God over good. We must choose God's word. Why? Because we are covenant keepers. We have our side of the covenant to keep. You choose this morning by the grace and the mercy of God that I'm going to uphold my side of the covenant. Just as God's word reminded us this morning that these are all the promises that he's made toward us and he is going to stand by it. He chooses every day to do it. Remember, God doesn't work by default. He intentionally renews mercies every morning. He intentionally does that. He intentionally causes the sun to rise over both the wicked and the righteous. And this morning, we must choose our attitude. Choose our attitude right at home. What am I saying? When you're faithful in the small things, God will give you authority over big things. Let's not go and focus on ministering outside of our homes before we minister in the home. You're faithful in Jerusalem. It all starts in Jerusalem. Such basic yet profound truths that we have often overlooked and we've missed the pattern because when the pattern is right, God's glory is attracted to you. And the pattern is simple. When you decide, when I decide, to be faithful in what is unseen, what the world does not know. For, I, for, 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 for me as a pastor, it's easy for me to stand in the pulpit and look good in front of people. But do people know how I treat my family at home? Do people know how I'm faithful to smile at home? I may be smiling to the rest of the congregation and I'm lovable to the rest of the congregation, but are my children seeing that same love, that same care, that same warmth at home as well. Because when we are one thing at home and another thing in public, that is the term hypocrisy. It must be intentional from home toward our children, toward our spouses. Start at Jerusalem. The pattern is Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to the uppermost parts of the earth. And you may say, but pastor, that's uh, spreading the gospel. Of course that is. When you are faithful to spread the gospel at home by your attitude that you've chosen this morning in response to God's covenant, knowing that that response is a covenant response. When that response reflects Christ, then the two covenant keepers are in agreement. The two covenant keepers are keeping the responsibilities and the conditions to the covenant. When we try to attempt big things so that the world will see us as miracle workers, as holy and righteous people, and at home we are quite different in our attitude, in our words, in our actions, the enemy is given right of way to come in and apply what he's always applied, still kill, destroy. But we shut the door and we seal it off when we intentionally decide, today I, 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 I'm deciding that I will be loving toward my family. My words will be encouraging. My words will be God glorified. My thoughts will be renewed mind of Christ. When we intentionally decide every morning, people of God, it will set the tone to your miracles throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month. But it starts daily by you and I deciding specifically what we're going to do today. Don't go through your day by default. Don't go through your day prayerlessly. This is the power of coming together to pray and iron sharpening iron because we now realize that I'm going to go through my day intentionally. I intend to read and study God's word. 
I intend to communicate with God. I'm not going to enter my day without these things being attended to. When we are intentional with our day and we systematically, not religiously, but systematically, wake up every morning and make these decisions, you will find it very practical. And the Bible says, this becomes worship unto the Lord. Remember the word worship and the word avad share the same, worship and labor share the same root word, which is the Hebrew word avad. Worship and labor. What am I saying? You and I must labor to enter into his rest. Worship is worship when we decide to work at our relationship. Amen? To work at our attitudes. And we work on our attitudes. We work on our relationship. When we decide very early, I will be forgiving today. Amen? I will be an overcomer today. I will not allow circumstances to override me. I will ride above the circumstances. Because my God will supply everything I need so that I will overcome today. It is a decision we intentionally make. Therefore, you see that it is not magic. God works in tandem in partnership with you. Because he's a covenant-keeping God. When we do our side of the bargain, he will be faithful. Supply all your needs according to his abundant riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So this morning, decide very practically that your words to your spouse will be one of encouragement, one of love. If you're a person who's always harsh, Hey, why is this not done? Why is that not done? Early in the morning, you've already empowered the enemy to enter into your home and change the atmosphere. Decide this morning that you will shut the door, shut the gates to the enemy by being an encouragement a loving person, and they are very practical things. Give your spouse a hug. Amen? Oh, but pastor, that, that, that's not, uh, who said that that's not godly? That's a very first practical step. Give your children a hug and a word of blessing. Because most of us in the islands, the first thing we do in the morning, wake up, wake up, it's time for school, blah, blah, blah. And everything, the, 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 the attitude is already set wrong. How about go to the side of the bed, pack them on the forehead, and speak a word of blessing over them. You're the head, not the tail. You're always above, never beneath. You will be a godly mm extender of God's kingdom rather than just trying to rush them through for breakfast rush them through to get the bus in the process you your blood is boiling your temperature is rising your sugar levels begin to affect your kidney and your pancreas these are all detrimental things that we are in control of so you control the controllables and God will control his side of the body and outside of the bargain, intentionally be a godly reflection in our homes to the people that are close to us. Because many times we look godly in public, but at home we are the devil incarnate through and through. And when we stand to speak, our children are looking at us, our spouses are looking at us, and they're wondering, Jeepers, is this the same person that lives with us at home? We need to be one and the same person at home, in public, wherever we are. Because like Jesus, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in him, there is no shadow of 
turning. These are very practical aspects where as we reach for the heavens and the supernatural, as we reach for the spiritual things, never forget to keep your feet grounded right where you are in practical adherence, intentional things to the, to the small things at home. When you're faithful in the small things, ladies and gentlemen, God will give you the next level of authority that you and I need. Amen. And we've just read scriptures this morning that promises us so much. And it all begins by us intentionally deciding to pray, deciding to study the word of God, deciding to be a blessing and encouragement right within our homes. You might say, but I need to discipline my children. Well, there are ways of disciplining your children. You can sit them down and talk to them like human beings rather than yell at them like a farmer yelling at the cattle or yelling at dogs or yelling at animals. You can change that by being decisive, intentional. Each morning, as you wake up, you decide your day. You decide your day. You decide your attitude toward your day. You'll decide your attitude toward work. Oh, but pastor, you don't know the challenges I go through at work. They are, well, you can't control the other people's attitude, but you definitely can control your attitude. You definitely can control your responses to circumstances. If they are full of hatred and they are full of vindicativeness, you don't respond by being the same people that they are. You respond by being the kingly royal authority that you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So this morning, as we enter our beautiful day, as we enter this wonderful month of October, you choose. You choose what goes in your mouth. You choose what you eat. Because what you eat contributes to your health, your physical health. Your physical health determines whether or not you can wake up early in the morning to pray. So all these things are to be put through the thought processes and you make a decision on it. Is this, is this beneficial? Because Paul told the church in Corinth, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible. You can do what you want to do. If you don't want to pray, that's your choice. If you don't want to eat healthy, that's your choice. It's permissible. But the second part of the equation is the question, will it be beneficial to the purpose to which you were assigned to accomplish? Will it help you achieve the assignment? Because at the end of the day, you and I are here to deliver a specific assignment from God written about us in the books. God wrote everything that we're supposed to deliver in a book. You and I have a volume in the library, in the archives of heaven that we are supposed to accomplish. Jesus himself said, I came to fulfill what was written about me in the book. And we can only fulfill what's written about us in the book when we are intentional. Don't live life by default. When you don't have a plan for your life, you will live somebody else's plan. You will serve someone else's dream. You will serve someone else's assignment. Don't let that happen. As children of God, we have our individual assignments and it starts when we intentionally choose every morning that I'm going to pursue the kingdom of God today. And that starts by me choosing the attitude that I have toward my family before I leave the door. I'll choose my attitude when I meet my enemies. What does the Bible say when we meet our enemies? 
we forgive them. Amen. We show Christ in the actions of our lives. Praise God. This morning as we are about to go into prayer. The Bible says, if you come to offer alms or offerings before me, put them at the altar, go back and settle your difference with the one that you're not seeing eye to eye with, then only will your offerings be accepted at the altar. This morning, it's, it's a good day to review. Is there a loved one that we're not seeing eye to eye with? We're not in talking terms with. And you're holding on to your side of the, 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 the story where you say you are right. You know, the kingdom rule is even when you're right, you can still apologize. The world will argue, what should I apologize for? There's nothing for me to apologize for. I'm right. Yeah, that's the way of the world. The way of the kingdom is humility. Even when you know you're right, you submit. And God, the righteous judge, will act on your behalf. This is intentional. These are choices that we make. They don't just happen by default. We choose to walk righteously because the paths of a righteous man, they are ordered. The paths of a righteous woman, they are ordered of God. You want to see greater miracles? You want to see greater breakthroughs? Be faithful in the small things. Be faithful in relationships at home. Be faithful in the words, in the tone of your voice. Be faithful in the way you treat your loved ones at home. And then God will give you cities and nations to rule over. I'd like you to join me now as we're about to pray in tongues. Pastor, why are we praying in tongues? Let me tell you the benefits of praying in tongues. When you pray in tongues, number one, you speak directly to the heart of God. Number two, no other principality powers or demons can understand what is being said. Neither can you. Paul said, when I pray in tongues, the mind is unfruitful. Why should the mind be unfruitful? Because when the mind can understand, the enemy can intercept. When the mind can understand, you and I will pray our biases, what we want to pray for, what we deem is prayable, what we deem as important. But when the spirit prays, the spirit prays what is in the heart of God. You may be praying in tongues here in the South Pacific, and it is an answer to somebody in Liberia, in Russia, in the farthest corners of the earth. That is an answer to someone's prayer, and you don't know it. Why? Because it is in the heart of God. It is God's desire that that need be met, and he's looking to and fro the face of the earth to find a person who will stand in the gap, and he looks down into the Pacific, and he sees he sees Sister Opal, he sees Brother Rafa, and he knows he can entrust them. And when we begin to pray in tongues, we are penetrating the curtains of darkness, and we're bringing an answer to someone else we don't even know. We might even only meet them in the other side, on the other side of eternity. But the power in that is that we're taking care of God's business. We're taking care of God's will. And when we pray according to God's will, he will take care of your business. Isn't that powerful? When we pray in tongues, it begins to renew our physicality. It begins to um, heal us from within. Why? The Bible says that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. That same spirit will revitalize and rejuvenate your mortal bodies and raise you up just as he raised Christ from the dead. Praise God. When you pray in tongues, there is power because Jude said in Jude verse 20 that you are praying from the peak point of your faith, the strongest point of your faith, you are launching out into prayer. You are launching out into the deep. Amen. When you pray in tongues, don't allow your mind to dictate 
that you switch to understanding. When you pray in your private closet, you can pray in understanding. But when you pray in, on this platform, I encourage you, 20 minutes, let's engage in tongues. And when you pray in tongues, you will find that God will speak very clearly to you because praying in tongues sharpens your sensitivities to the things of the spirit. It may sound funny because the mind craves order. It may sound chaotic, but what is chaotic and jumbled, only God can unjumble and understand. And that's what matters. Praying in tongues humbles us because we are not in charge. God becomes in charge because the Bible says that he will utter before the throne needs that cannot be articulated in words. It is overwhelming. When you pray in tongues, addictions that nobody knows that you are suffering from begins to break because there is a laundry that's going on when you pray in tongues. It cleanses you from the deepest depths, weaknesses. I've heard John Bevere speak about it. When he prayed in tongues, he was delivered from pornography. Yes, John Bavir, the author. When he prayed in tongues, continuously, addictions begin to break. Are you addicted to something in the dark that nobody knows of, that only you know and you're ashamed of? This morning, that can be broken when you pray consistently and spend quality time in tongues. Well, that leads us to our next question. But Pastor, I don't know how to speak in tongues. I don't know how to pray in tongues. Don't be misconstrued by the two. There's one called the gift of tongues and the other is called praying in tongues. This is the born again language. The moment you receive Christ as your personal savior. First Corinthians 5.17 says, Behold, all things have become new. You're a new creature. The new creature has a language. The new creature has a culture. This is the new language of the new creature born again in Christ. How do I pray in tongues? Psalm 82 says, open your mouth and I will fill it. And it begins with one syllable. That syllable comes through your mind, from your spirit, and you speak it out. When you don't understand it, you're on the right track. When you don't understand it, you're on the right track. It can be just da, 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 da for the first few weeks. And then you add another one. Ba, ba, ba. Yakaraba. Some people say, but, I, but, but, but I, I thought that when you are filled with the spirit, your mouth will, I'm waiting for my tongue to rattle off on its own. Let me tell you something about the spirit, the spiritual realm. When you are out of control, you are possessed. When you're not in charge, when you're not in control, something else is in control and God does not control that way. God always gives you the right to choose. Know how God operates. If you're waiting for your tongue to wag off on its own and you can't control it, then that's inviting a different entity to be in charge. And that's how the enemy comes in and lies to you and takes over. When you pray in tongues, you are still in charge. The Bible says the spirit is subject to the prophet. So I can pray in tongues. And then I switch back to English. Why? Because the prophet is in charge. I hope I'm getting across to you. When you pray in tongues, it is you trusting the spirit to give you that syllable through your mind and you speak it out. What are you doing? You are operating by faith. Everything that is done in the kingdom is done by faith. Amen. And when you speak out your first syllable, da, 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 da. Yakakaba kutubo shikialala. But pastor, how come you are fluent? I am fluent in speaking in tongues because I've spoken it for 30 years. Just like speaking in Fijian or English, 
or your mother tongue because you've spoken it over and over again. You know different words. You know how to string a sentence because you've practiced it. The same thing in the spiritual realm. It is not rocket science. It is not magic, ladies and gentlemen. It is practice. I, I'm in the car, I'm speaking in tongues. I'm walking on the streets, I'm speaking in tongues. I'm shopping, I'm speaking in tongues. I'm sitting in my living room, I'm speaking in tongues. What are you doing? You're conversing with the spirit of God. And when you speak in tongues, you draw the presence of God into the atmosphere. And all you've got to do is silence your, 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 your brain because your brain will laugh at you. Gosh, you sound awkward. Gosh, you don't even sound spiritual. That, uh, those are the, the distractions that I talked about yesterday that needs to be switched off. Because it pleased God that the foolishness of this, the foolishness of the gospel would confound the wise. Things that happen in the kingdom may look foolish, but they're powerful. And so I would encourage you, pray in tongues. That's why we spend 20 minutes Whenever we're on this platform, and I encourage you to pray in tongues every day, spend a few minutes, 10 to 20 minutes in tongues before you switch to praying and understanding. Paul said these words. He said, I pray in, in understanding and I pray in tongues also. The moment he used the, 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 the word also, he has given precedence or he has given uh, Number one status to praying in tongues over praying in understanding. Why? When you pray in understanding, the enemy uh, understands your language. And he can stop your prayers just as he did to Daniel. He can block your prayers because he understands that it's coming from a very biased point. He can block it. But when you pray in tongues, no way. It confuses the enemy, uh, the enemy's camp. It confuses his understanding, it goes directly to the throne and the password to unravel that package is only held by God. And he unravels it and he answers directly to your situation. So right now, this is a good place to practice praying in tongues. Just open your mouth and allow the spirit to induce to you the syllables that only he can decipher on his side of the bargain. Let's begin to pray. You can switch on your... Kor <laughs> Yo to bo shande re bebe kiri ara baba saka ta baba saka iti ya baba koro bo shi ya la la ba yo to ro bo shanda ra baba yete bebe siki ya baba kundu ro bo shi ya la la yo koto bo bo shanda baba kindi ya kata ba saka iti ya baba kuri ya la la ba yo ndo ro bo shi ita baba kura ba siki ara baba kandi iti ya ta baba koro bo shi ya la la ba kundu ro bo shi ka hundred and twenty seconds to go ya ta baba kundu ro bo shi ka press in. In Hallelujah, ya kaba ba kuto bo shi, kaba ba yande. Yara ba ba siki, ya kaba ba kuri ala la. Yoko to bo sa, kaba ba yololo bo. Ria kaba ba kundo ro bo shi. Ya ba ba kara ba siki, ya ba ba siki te be be kiri ala. Ya ba ba kuri ala. Koto bo bo sha ndara ba. Ya ba ba kuri ala la. Yoko to bo shi, ya kaba ba Ninety seconds, 
Lord, for you this morning, you will know God, God who has broken through in your finances and resources. He is giving you keys to open doors in your company, your industry, and your business. Only you have access to. God has designed you to carry authority and to see what he is doing, what he is promoting, and what he wants to release. He is removing false systems of operation that are man's way, and you are his child who will reveal his ways. He will shut doors to your industry or business sphere that are old and rusty, immoral, or letting the unrighteous prosper. You have the keys to pray these doors closed, not just open up his doors. He will lead you to pray for the shutting up of where the enemy has tried to use prosperity for his own means. His spirit is coming on you to give you insight, wisdom, and clarity. You will look at closed doors and immovable problems, but because of the keys you hold, they will open and move for you. People will notice this movement. They will notice this authority. This will draw many to want to be around you, to work with you, to purchase or to use your services. You have the keys to doors right now and you learn and as you learn your authority and as he places you within your calling, you will open doors you couldn't have never opened without accessing your relationship with him, without accessing your covenant with him. This will cause people around you to wonder how you got where you are. They will marvel at what God has done for you, and they will know you couldn't have accomplished it without him. They will know this is unmistakably the signature of the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord for you. Receive it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. 